lights, camera, action. Join the stream team with Strick and Brent and be a part of the stream network. Our goal is really simple. We're here to help you succeed. Here we go. Here we go. Listen, it's your boy Strick. And uh, man, I got a couple things happening on this side. And I am so excited about today's show. Why well, I'm excited about today's show? Because it's actually part two of a show that I already did. But before I get into all the announcements and everything, let me get my co host for today's show on with me right now, a great friend of mine, none other than Dr. Henry Payne of UAB. Dr. Payne, how are you doing, sir? Check him doing out. Great, Check him man. out. Check him doing? out. <laughs> how you doing? Man, man I'm see great. You. I am great. And um, man, we got music and everything behind us. I know we've got pomp and circumstance. I would that, prefer to hear. I wish he had played some Boots and Collins or something, man. Boots and Collins or something like that. Man, we yeah, got, you know, we got uh, people here for us. <laughs> Elaine, thank you for hanging out with me. Good to be here. Now, man, yes, finally. Somebody said finally. Yes, we are here. All right. Good to see this everybody coming on. Coming That's through. cool. We got people coming through. So excited to hear from Greg again. Greg is doing it. So, you know what? Dr. Pinion, help me out because I don't want to have him wait any longer because he may play. Let, let him wait. Song. Let him wait. He, he deserves to wait. Let him wait. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> no, I'll, I'll let him wait. He's a good guy. No, that's all right. No, no, that's all right. That's so, okay. you want to do the introductions today? Sure, I'll do the introductions. You know, first of all, let me just give a big shout out to Strict, who's doing it. With this great show, Thank you, we sir. have a, a, an audience from UAB and the community. And when we just, our last show went so well, and we received so many favorable comments uh, that we decided that uh, we'd try to do it again uh, and open it up to the community. And I tell you, uh, Dr. Payne, are you seeing great... these comments really quick? I hate to interrupt you, but we got somebody from Belgium Russia. chiming in and from Russia, Russia chi chiming in. And then we also have PJ Spragans. I mean, from Russia, Belgium to Birmingham, people are on today. All they, over the world. It's from, great. They hear from this. They are ready. Well, you, everybody okay. chime in. Let us know where you're from. We're really excited. Uh, we got some Michael Jackson fans. Germany. Anita from Germany is here. Uh, but you know, let me tell you, I, I want to, on, on a serious tip, uh, this individual that we are going to bring on, I had a chance to first meet with my good friend and, and music icon, Stevie Wonder. And when I heard him play, you know, you just can't be anybody playing with Stevie Wonder or singing with Stevie Wonder. That's right. People will say that all the time. And and over the years, I've gotten to know this individual, but his musical talent, we have been knowing for a long, long time. Right. There's hardly a record we can pick up that he's not on. There's hardly a major artist that has recorded and in any style, from gospel to rock to jazz to R&B to pop, he is ubiquitous in this industry. So to say that I'm excited about us being able to have such an individual who in many ways is a lot of fun, as you will see, uh, but has been my friend, and now people in Birmingham and around the world, and our students at UAB have been able to benefit from just all he has to offer i want to welcome once again to strict city none other than the one and only mr greg filling gains there he is. oh my goodness oh my goodness <laughs> what am i supposed to do with that <laughs> oh my goodness me. It was so uh, appropriate exactly. for you. That was appropriate well, for you. Well, listen, uh, the, the check's in the mail, bro. I, uh, that, was, that was pretty uh, strong. That was well, that's Greetings, real, everyone from around the world. Greetings. 
Greg, like I literally, see, people are literally from all around the world chiming oh, in so on nice. this stream today. And uh, I'm wow. excited about it, man. Great to have you. Of course, they're here. Uh, one guy, uh, let me see, his name was Jay Jackson. He says, hey, learning about Michael's create creative process by those who work with him. I mean, he's so interested in, in hearing about the creative process today, and we yeah. thank God that uh, he's chiming in. But there's so many more here to uh, hear from you, of course, from England. Um, this is going to be education. I mean, people have a very high <laughs> bar for us today, Greg. We got some work to do. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> we got yeah. some work to do. <laughs> the word got out. That's amazing. Uh, you know? yeah, yeah. And, uh, I better uh, make from up all some cool sounding stuff. You know, I tell you, one of the things I do want to give a shout out before we get too deep to my colleagues uh, uh, at UAB, uh, the Department of Music, and our students. Uh, Greg has actually, in addition to the open forums, he's interacted with our majors, our music technology majors. Uh, earlier this week, he actually participated in a recording session with our jazz top jazz combo uh, and Dr. Stephen Roberts, who heads the uh, jazz program at UAB. And then our tech majors was there working. And so we will be lacing that. Uh, Greg will be lacing that with uh, his own uh, playing on top of this track. So wow. uh, we're really excited about that. And students were able to submit their works for, for Greg to kind of evaluate them. And uh, so it's just been a, a, a most impactful uh, semester. And even during this COVID-19 pandemic, we've been able to capitalize on uh, being shut in as it were. Uh, and Greg has just made himself just so available to us and we're so appreciative and so uh, we'll talk more about that. But I guess we're gonna talk about my, uh, Greg and Michael Jackson a lot tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, uh, see, this is going to be kind of ghetto the way I'm doing this because I, That's I, okay. I did a, uh, a speaking situation where I, uh, I offered up some pictures and they were able to show it on the screen. But because we don't have that capability for this situation, I'm just going to show you uh, some things and, and hopefully... You won't get too much of a glare, but I have a nasty feeling you will. I'm gonna try it anyway. Um, you know, just so you can see. Oh, we're game. Why you do that? Oh. I, and I yeah. have one yeah. or two pictures uh, as well, Greg. You do? So we're game. Yeah, yeah. I have. Um, what do you have? See if I can pull up one from. You got something with me and Mike? Yeah, yeah. A couple pictures here. Let me see what I can pull up. Okay, that'd be nice. While, while you're working on, on that end, let me work on my end and see if I can pull up. Uh, we actually use it for the thumbnail for the show Oh, today. and you know, and I have got to go and share this on a different site as well, because folks are hitting me all over the world. Are they telling you, it's, hey, they can't? They yes. Can't. Yeah. And I've got to go ahead and put this on the UAB site, which I probably should have done before. Uh, let's go here. There's a, is there a public link strict that I should use for that? Um, I would, I would use the, um, YouTube link and okay. YouTube.com. Yeah. You know, I was so busy. I forgot about Strict that. Strict City 01. Do I okay. need to text Strict you? Strict City 01. Yeah, yeah. Don't text anything to me because then I have a transfer. I'm going to go to my <laughs> Facebook page and do it that way. Uh, yeah, they're hitting me from all over. I got folks from Russia and as well, another person and all over the world. Uh, Greg, you're popular. It's very popular today. Well, today, yeah. <laughs> just, just today, right? <laughs> just today. Not the other day. Yeah, no. Um, Let me go here. And we're all doing the oh, same yeah. thing, looking for pictures to yeah. grow up. And we're going to be relaxed. I'm going to tell folks, don't stress. We're going to be all right. Don't stress. It's fine. It's going to be fine. We'll be there in a minute. Okay, I, there's one thing I can show you. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There's one thing I can here. show you. Let's see. This is what I call the fearsome foursome. It's also what I call, what the heck am I doing in this shot? Uh, this was at Westlake. 
Studios doing the making of Off the Wall. Let's see who we can identify in this foursome shot. Excuse the glare, but we're gonna we're gonna try to do this. Oh, let me let me pull it back up so everybody can see your screen. Now, see, I already know. I've seen this picture. Oh, that's that's good. a good one. I already know who who's in the picture. Okay, but I don't need you to say anything. Okay, I won't say anything. You guys can I, put I, it in the comments. Put it in the comments. I want to put it in the comments. Picture. Who's there? Who's there? All right. So, so that's pretty good. Uh, we got we got that's people commenting. They okay. So, Paul. Q and Mike. Yeah. And yep. uh yeah, that's good. But you're missing and the fourth one. You're missing the fourth person. <laughs> huh? You're there. Yeah. Okay, Quincy, Quincy oh, Jones I know. is definitely in there. Yeah, I don't know who that is. MJ, Paul, Mike, and then Greg. Yes, yes, there you go. Me, with, me with hair. That's it's me with hair. <laughs> yes, it is me with hair. Thank you. Isn't that crazy? MJ, hair? Paul, Q, and Greg. Yeah, yes, you got it. Yeah. You got it. Good job. Yeah. Good job. So they, they caught that one. That was, uh, I, that was during uh, the making of The Girl Is Mine. Ah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what a great video that time. was. Yeah. There was no video for that. I thought there was. Yeah, it was a video. No. They the were on the back. Mine? Yeah, no, back there's a the, video for yeah, yeah, that's a video there's of that. A video for that. Okay. So what do I? You know? just yeah, you were yeah. you just weren't in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, bro. Okay, now this this is also from younger days when I had hair, and this is from the making of We Are the World. You know what? The last time you were on, Greg, I was going to ask you about your uh, part that you played in We Are the World. And I was actually watching the video and waited to the credits. And guess what? What? I saw your name. I said, uh -oh. Greg was there. He was a part of this thing. That, I was you know, there. That was a, a um, point in time, like for a generation that was like no other. What was That's that process right. like for you? Well, it was monumental. It was extremely special. Quincy was uh, talking to me about who he had involved. Um, uh, the, the primary artists being, of course, uh, Michael and Lionel. Right. Um, and how he planned on corralling everyone else together, uh, as only he could do. Right. And um, it was wonderful. It, uh, I, I went to, there's footage, there's a documentary on this. At, that uh, I'm also part of, and it shows me rehearsing at the piano with Michael, uh, Lionel, and Stevie, going over wow. the <laughs> going wow. over the lines, and I'm just sitting there, and you know, it's you don't even have time to think about how amazing this moment is. You just do what you have to do. And by the way, you're being filmed, you know, and got cameras all around, and of course, the artists knew they were being filmed. And I just showed up looking raggedy, right? But uh, you know. They they were all dressed, but uh, no, it was a it was a fantastic experience uh, from the rehearsing uh, with the guys to the recording of it. Um, a, a huge group of musicians uh, uh, contributed. Uh, I wasn't the only keyboard player. I, I played uh, piano on it, but we also had David Page, you know, on synths. We had uh, you know, a, a monumental one. Uh, let me ask you about that. Positions. Let me ask you about that. Yeah. You know, there every now and then in history there are big pop songs, but you're talking about you know just the nature of pulling all the artists together on something like you know we are the world, um, and when you have no way of knowing something like that is going to be so monumental and, and life changing, and impactful throughout the world. You know. How does it feel to know that, wow, oh, I've contributed to something that will go down in history? And I know you've been a part of a lot of historical events musically, but a song like that crosses the line from just being entertainment 
to be in something that raised obviously a lot of money for uh, I think it was for AIDS if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken not mistaken uh, but then it was more than even just that it became a song that really helped to to bring the world together and it, it became a rallying cry right yep it really so how and look I mean it, it feels wonderful man I mean it, it feels uh, just as uh, much of a source of pride as it does being involved in songs in the key of life <laughs> you know wow. um, uh, or off the wall or thriller or bad I mean it it, it, it feels it's just one of many uh, massive uh, blessings that I'm just grateful for you know uh, I never ever imagined, you know, when I was still in Detroit that, you know, a little scrawny haired colored kid from Detroit would end up, you know, anywhere near the uh, the heights that I've that I've I've been in. But please make no mistake, you know, for every massive achievement and height and mountain, there have been twice as many uh, valleys. <laughs> Easily. So, but, uh, but my guess is what, they what? make you. I was going to say, my guess is that it makes you probably appreciate those heights and not take them for granted. Oh, absolutely, right. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Because without the valleys, you don't really understand the significance of the mountains, you know. Um, and uh, the valleys were the valleys is where you find out who you really are. But Ain't that's, no great. that's oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, I know. I love this. Oh, the days of hair. Yeah, they're wonderful. Yeah, we had a we had a nice bond, you know. Um, so you know, I never really I never really think about looking at YouTube that much, but there are a lot of people commenting on YouTube. It's yeah. just uh, Oh yeah. I see people all over the place. I always jump to Facebook because it's so convenient. Uh, and, and, and I have several YouTube pages, but you have some great questions and comments from people on YouTube. Okay, give me one question. One question from a from a, a, a fan. Uh, Let me see if I can. Pull oh, up someone here. corrected me. They said <laughs> it was for hunger and not AIDS. Thank That's you. right. I should know that it was for, yeah, thank AIDS you. for African was for hunger. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Thanks, Stephanie. I'm a little foggy on that now, but yes, it was absolutely for hunger. Um, one person is saying uh, they, how they love watching concerts where Michael and Greg laugh uh, hmm. and beat the rhythm together, uh, like in hmm. bad. They love that. Um, uh, well, if you really want to, if you really want a good laugh, you should check me out in uh, the video for "Come Together" from the Moonwalker movie. He had me all painted up in silver, looking like a a, a, a road warrior reject. And uh, you know, I'm standing next to him and you know doing all the rock star moves. It was pretty cool. Here's a question from mm. a Trenton Bates uh, on YouTube asking Greg if you could talk about. Michael Jackson's original 80s version of Behind the Mask. Ah, ha, ha. I'm looking okay. for the, the question, okay. but you read it there. Um, okay. You said Trenton Bates? Uh huh. Trenton Bates on YouTube? Yes. Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, how it came about that I even, uh, you know, was able to get the song was. Uh, it had to do with a meeting, a production meeting that Quincy invited me to. I have no idea to this day why he did it, but I'm so glad he did. Quincy invited me, along with Rod Temperton, to Michael's house to uh, listen to his latest demos. And that's where we got our own private world premiere of Billie Jean, Beat It, and Starting Something. Wow. That's the first time I heard him song, right? And so... Um, uh, he played a lot of other things, too. One of the things he played was Behind the Mask. And I was getting songs together for my solo album at the time. It was my second solo album. So after the meeting, I asked Mike uh, about that particular song. I said, listen, if, if you don't end up using that, can I use it? He said, sure. So uh, he sent me the demo, and uh, it was killing. It was killing, Trent. It was, really, it was fantastic, because what happened was... You know, uh, Michael's demos, well, demos in general are, are raw anyway, but Michael just put all of his raw energy into every demo he mm -hmm. did. 
and um, he he uh, he took the song from an artist named Ryuichi Sakamoto, and Ryuichi uh, is the leader of a band called uh, Yellow Magic Orchestra. That's where Michael first heard it. It was an instrumental, you know. So it's a. Uh, uh, had all these weird sounds in it, you know, like. You know, all these weird synthesizers doing that kind of stuff. And so what Michael did was he took that instrumental track and put this funkiest melody on it with lyrics. And so he ended up approaching it like Levi Stubbs in the Four Tops, you know? So it's like... All I know I had to talk about Like I do it so Just do it instead You know, he was really, you know... All along I knew you were a phone nigger. Well, you know, when you hang around somebody Sound long like enough... Michael, by the way. No, you, you hang around somebody long enough, it tends to rub off a little bit. But, uh... <laughs> but, uh... Awesome. But, uh... Might want to turn so, the so, game so, down that mic, though. Oh, okay. So, so, um... So that's how it happened. So when I heard that, I thought, oh, man, this is going to be a smash. Wow. Um, and, and I thought, well, I can't lose with this. But I did because of the age-old problem with polarization in radio. Uh, the, the, the white stations thought it was too black sounding, and the black stations thought it was too white sounding. I'm like, dude, it's Michael freaking Jackson who wrote this. What What are you missing? You know. That sounds... It sounds exactly like a Michael Jackson song, too. Come on, man. Well, you know, he th that's what he did. He made it his own. And uh, so I just tried to emulate that uh, when I recorded it as best as I could. And, you know, uh, it just, it, it, didn't, it didn't do what we were hoping it would do. I did do a video for it. So if you want to really, if you really want a good laugh, look at my video for Behind the Mask. Uh, and uh, I ended up performing that on American Bandstand with Dick Clark. Wow. So that was that was significant. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I got interviewed by Dick. I, I, that was fantastic. So, um, you know, you can look that up too, but uh, that's how that came about. Here's one, here's a question that I think is really pretty interesting. Uh, from Darren uh, McGowan, he asked, yeah. he said, Greg, he said, yeah. Thanks for doing this. He says, uh, as Michael's musical director for yeah. several tours, how well, did he... two. Okay, so that's several. That counts. How, <laughs> did he, how did he dictate to you what he wanted in his show? He said, I've heard his voice could mimic instruments, as you just did, of course. Oh, absolutely. 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 Um, uh, you hear that in... Um, and you hear that in tiny bits in songs like uh, This Place Hotel, Harpe Hotel. Um, and uh, which is why he loved David Williams, the great uh, guitarist who passed away actually before Michael did. Um, because uh, David could interpret exactly what Michael was articulating. And, you know, it's true, he could sound like a guitar, he could sound like, uh, you know, a lot of different things. And, um, but when it came to my interaction with with uh, Michael, you got to remember I played on most of this stuff anyway, so mm -hmm. I kind of knew how I kind of knew how it went. <laughs> and you know, my job as MD is to uh, translate the artist's wishes, no matter who the artist is, to the band, and make sure that the band is playing all the parts right. And you know, Michael trusted me with that. There was some mutual trust and admiration, and any. Uh, new ideas that he had, uh, he was able to discuss with me and, you know, sometimes with the band as well. So uh, it was a, it was a pretty uh, straight ahead process. There was no, you know, extra special way of doing anything. It was just basic communication. Now I have another one for you uh, from our audience. What was your um, tour that you liked the most? All of them. All of them. You just like being out there. Well, I mean, look, I, I was MD for Lionel Richie's first solo tour, 
which happened before Michael. So that was significant. Right. Uh, I got to I got to sing songs like Ceylon with him. There was a point wow. in the show because it, the, the, the show was directed by the incredible Broadway director Joe Layton. I mean, you know, Lionel went to the top, you know, for uh, for for, uh, for for help, and Joe Layton directed the show, and he had it so that uh, for Ceylon. I would come down from my keyboard and stand uh, sort of next to or sort of across from Lionel, leaning on his grand piano, and I would sing the first part of Ceylon, the first verse of Ceylon. Wow. I mean, come on. Um, that's one thing. Uh, and hey, then, I'm an Alabama course, boy, so of course you know Lionel Richie is like one of my favorites. Yeah. You know, right yeah, out absolutely. of Tuskegee, Alabama. So yeah, of course. I, I'm, I'm still a big fan of his music. Then of course. And, and then, of course, uh, you know, the Michael tours. Uh, the bad tour, um, I I probably enjoyed a little more than the Dangerous tour um, because it was his first one and it was fresh and there was just this, this joy that Michael had in finally being out on his own touring. And uh, that, that, that translated to all of us and, and uh, we shared that joy. And you can see that in the video for um, another part of me uh, from the bad tour. Uh, um, the Dangerous Tour, I wasn't originally asked to do. Gotcha. Until a couple days, until the, <laughs> until two or three days before they were packing the stuff up to ship to Europe. Wow. I got called in literally at the last minute. I mean, it was un unbelievable. So there's a question and, from the audience that was just asking, why did you leave the first leg? So do they have that wrong a little bit? Nope, nope, that, that's true. I, I I went as long as Japan in, uh, and that was 1991, I think. Man, we have some real knowledgeable viewers we out there, we don't do. we? Yeah, wow. that's great. So, so let me let me answer this. The, re the reason why I left, and this is not a good reason, you know, but you, you, you want to know, so I'm gonna tell you. Um, I left because actually, well, let's just say there were uh, there were conflicts. There there were differences of uh, of of philosophy. Uh, there were differences of of production, their production issues. And I found that, that uh, Michael wasn't really as interested as I had hoped he would be. I think uh, at a certain point he just went on automatic pilot. And uh, there were things that I wanted to discuss with him and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get to him to do it after several tries. So I, I stayed on until uh, Japan, till the end of that year, 91. I believe it was 91. Or 92. I'm not sure, but it was, uh, it was one of those. Uh, because I love Japan so much, and we spent uh, virtually the entire month of December in Japan. And after that, I left. And also, I was really burnt out. I was at, completely burnt out from touring and spending long periods of time uh, you know, on the road. And I, I needed a break. Spiritually, I was being... Uh, worn down. Gotcha. And I, I remember thinking, I remember thinking after I got home, I, I really needed this. And besides, who else would I go out with? Or who else would call me anyway, right? Well, there was an answer for that. Because shortly after I came home and started detoxing from the Michael tour, I got a call from Peter Gabriel's office wanting to know if I would tour with him. And I actually turned it down. Wow. So let me ask this. Yeah, you know, uh, that's a very, very good point. You know, many times when you're on the road with artists, you know, I, I just go back to one classic moment when I first started working with Stevie. The whole idea of, okay, first of all, I'm trying to please Stevie Wonder. And my guess is part of what you're doing, Greg, is also trying to please uh, uh, Michael. Your MD, I was conducting the orchestra. And then I'll never forget how serious I was taking something. And you know, Stevie, better than I do. 
and how Stevie was just so cool and it's like and I actually seemed to get a real charge out of my being uptight about something and I'm going like wait a minute this is his show it's his production I'm uptight about something that I want just to be as precise as it can be and he's chilled about it did right, you so why am I tripping yeah <laughs> so why am I tripping so yeah. Uh, it was, and it's tough for me because you know I'm, you know I'm telling Steve. I said, Steve, we got a sixty-piece orchestra here. You just can't decide to go left. They were never programmed to go right, and mm -hmm. uh, and he would laugh. You know, in the show he would laugh. Now it worked out. It, it got better, and I was early on, and I learned how to deal with that. But my question for you, though, Greg, you know, as musical director, you know, and maybe there's a part of this you want to go in and part of you, part of you don't. But I'm curious, because we're talking about Michael Jackson, we're talking about someone who we all feel and know uh, was a perfectionist to a certain degree. Uh, at least that's what we hear, have heard. So artistically, musically, technically, can you share a little bit more about some of the things that may have happened artistically, musically or technically, that you had problems with? Um, well, let's see. Um, I'm really foggy on the details. I just remember um, from about the middle of the year, uh, when we were still in Europe doing the, uh, the, the Dangerous Tour, I, I, there were there were things that that I was concerned about production wise. Um, I think from a, obviously more of a musical standpoint that I wanted to talk with him about, and uh, I was promised by security that it would happen. And it just kept getting put off, and then it got to the point where I, uh, you know, I ended up like you, and I was like, well, why am I sure that this guy does seem to care? because there were certain at, at you know by that time there were certain things that Michael cared about more production-wise than others. Um, he cared, number one, about choreography. He was all about the choreography. He also cared deeply about lighting. Um, and then he cared about sound um, as it related to him uh, on stage. He, <laughs> his preferred level, his preferred volume level was you know, uh, you know, if the, if the highest number on a on a on a you know a fader or a amp, if, if it's ten, his preferred level was fifteen hundred. I mean, he he'd be on stage, and you know, on on a, on a stage, there's there's side fills. So side fills are, are gigantic speakers that that uh, allow the artists to, to have you know uh, more of a more of a an encompassing sound as they as they move about on stage, and he had massive side fills, and he wanted them cranked to five thousand, you know. And I mean, it's ear splitting. I mean, it would crack your spine the way he he the level that he wanted it. But he said, "I gotta be able to feel it. I gotta be able to feel." It. So that's that's what happened. Um, and he felt it. I mean, the, the the levels the levels from these side fills literally would crack granite. Wow. Um, yeah, he, he was not only the king of pop, he was the king of volume, Adam Marie said. <laughs> yeah, he was definitely the king of volume because that's how he liked it in the studio, too. He was splittingly loud, you know. I gotta be able to feel it. So, um, uh, you know, those were, the, those were the issues. And and I realized that, you know, it was never going to uh, improve. It was These things that I was concerned about were not going to improve. It wasn't going to get to a better uh, level. So I thought, well, I'm kind of wasting my time here, and I I, I didn't want to I didn't want to leave, you know, more burnt out than I was. Wow. You know, so, I want to give a shout out to all these people real quickly from around the world. Iago Cruz from Brazil. We have a true the the bang, the bang. Sh show to tonight. It's just great to see people popping up from all over this this planet. Uh, wonderful, what yeah, okay. this, uh, yeah, we're really excited for that. Uh, some other people from Brazil and all over. Man, Brazil's in the house tonight. They are. Come on, are. Brazil, come on. 
I do have I'm another question. You. I have another. I'm praying question. for. I'm praying. I'm praying for the people of Brazil down there with the uh, the rapid uh, variants. You know, I'm praying for y'all down there. And, and that's serious, like uh, all of yeah. us. I mean, it, it, it is it is uh, one of those places that there's a hotbed, and I, I'm with Greg. We're definitely praying for Brazil. And I do have a question for you, Greg. Someone says, uh, didn't Michael basically stop singing during live? Stop singing live during the Dangerous tour? Is that true? Not completely. Not completely. He did sing something. I mean, he always sang. She's out of my life. Uh, okay. Live. Um, but the faster paced things tended to be uh, uh, lip sync. It's just because of the the, uh, the grueling choreography that was involved. You know? Right. So and yeah, a lot of a lot of things a lot of things he did lip sync, but not completely. Gotcha. gotcha. Col Colombia, France, Germany, Australia, Portugal, all all in the house tonight. Peru. Come on, Denmark, come on. Peru, Denmark, uh, New Zealand. Come on now. Uh, wonderful. Sweden. It's great to see Sweden? everybody from around the world chiming in. What so another, this is wonderful. This is another sweet. question from the audience. What was your favorite song to play on a keyboard with uh, Michael Jackson in the concerts? Well, that's a pretty good question. Uh, let's see. One of them I know I liked was Smooth Criminal. Got you. Uh, oh, The Way You Make Me Feel was another one. Yeah. Yeah, and and she's out of my life because it was mostly me and him. You know, I love she's out of my life. In fact, yeah. I was an undergrad, Greg, when you all did that record, and uh, one of the first arrangements that I did uh, when I was an undergrad mm -hmm. was for the band, the marching band, to perform was she's out of my life. And well, I'd like to hear that. Yeah, well, typically imagine a three hundred piece marching band doing it, and what typically would have with show bands a three hundred piece marching band doing a ballad? That's pretty. Oh yeah, well, yeah, it's really nice. That's so pretty ballsy right there. Well, something, but to, to, <laughs> yeah, you know what you normally do is you bring the band together like you do a symphony in concert formation, uh, and so therefore they're there. They don't have to play loud, but when you have three hundred members playing something soft like she's out of my life with the wonderful harmonies there mm -hmm. uh it's great and uh that those arrangements that arrangement helped get me a full ride through graduate school so i'm, I'm come on out here come on I'm doctor grateful, i'm grateful for your work there on that record man That's long on, before man. i knew you <laughs> come on now come on <laughs> what a wonderful well record done. though let's talk about off the wall a little bit because you know yes. uh, don't stop till you get enough is another one off of that record that's one of the favorites of mine. Yes. But some of the musicians like Rod Temperton and, and others, uh, that sound of that production, that there had not been a record to sound like that, produced like that before then. And there were great records always. But every now and then, we go through a period where a record will come out and then people may not even know it, why they like it so much. But it was more than just to sing it. It was to production, it was the sonics, it was obviously the great songs, the instrumentation, the playing, all of that came together in such a way on that record that it became a, a classic and will always be a classic. But from your standpoint, when you think of, of a record like Off The Wall, uh, how was it, and I, did Bruce Sweeting engineer that record as well? Of course he did. He did uh, all of Quincy's recordings. And the thing about it is, you know, it's not that Off the Wall was the first of its kind. You remember, uh, there would be no Off the Wall sonically without the dude. That's true. Because that's true. Uh, because uh, many of the same cast of characters were on the dude. That was Quincy's not not his first solo album by any stretch, but uh, uh, that was a, a, an album that ushered in a kind of a different era of. Uh, Quincy's sound and, and his his approach, you know, and uh, it was the first album that he involved uh, the incomparable Rod Temperton, songwriter uh, extraordinaire, yes. yep. and uh, Rod wrote the title track along with um, you know a, a couple other songs uh, on that album, and Michael was singing background on something, um, you know, so. And of course, Bruce did that. So, the the uh, the the primary factors are Quincy as producer, 
Bruce as engineer, uh, Rod as writer, and uh, 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 an impeccable, bulletproof, all-star musicians cast. Were the Brothers Johnson, uh, uh, were they on the record as well? Uh, Lewis. Lewis was on, Lewis bass. Was on bass. Okay, on bass. Okay. Yeah. For, wow. for Lewis, Lewis was on uh, uh, Get On The Floor. Actually, I think uh, Michael wrote Get On The Floor with Lewis. Wow. Get on the floor. No, boom. Boogie, ticket, ticket, down, 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 That's Lewis, man. It's the brothers, Lewis of the brothers Johnson. That whole yeah. sound. Just on, and you're on keys, of course. Uh, was, yeah. Were there? Who was the keyboard player? What's uh, on that on that record? Oh my gosh, uh, David Page. David Page. There you go. From Toto. Um, you know I. Michael Boddicker, who did uh, you know a lot of programming and, and some playing too. Um, uh, yeah, we. Uh, and, and you know, there's another classic sound too. And why is his name escaping me? Jerry Hay on trumpet. Oh please! Well, Jerry Hay and his his stellar the, whole, uh, the horn uh, arrangements uh, and the uh, horns, yeah. Horn players, yeah. That's a, that's actually a, another integral part. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Sure. You, you hear sure. that Jerry Hay horn section? Uh, so, for sure. Un- unbelievable. So I got go out and get off. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say. I was just going to say. If you have not had a chance to visit uh, Off the Wall, just go back and listen to that record. And of course, the, the, my three favorite Quincy records would be The Dude, and then of course the Back on the Block series of two records there. But then even earlier stuff with Quincy, we don't want to get into that right now, but because this is a Michael Jackson show. Uh, but go ahead, go ahead, Strick. I do have a question, and this is more, you know, I guess is, um, I guess rumor mill kind of stuff. But people want to know, like this question. I, I personally want to know this question. How did Michael? Did he ever mention to you like how he felt about Prince? Like that was always like at a certain time like, <laughs> they battled like Michael Jackson, Prince, who was best, who was the best artist, who did the best. That was always a big deal. Did he ever talk about Prince? Well, I'll start uh, at the end and go backwards. Um, in later years, uh, they became, uh, you know, friends. Uh, had great respect for each other. Um, I understand that Prince took it really, really hard when Michael died. Hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, Prince would come to see Mike secretly at, at certain shows. Um, and, uh, you know, so so there was that. But there was one, <laughs> there was one, one of uh, a few funny moments I had with Mike. Uh, I was at the house and he said, you want to see something funny? Like that. I said, I did this show with Prince. You want to see it? It's, it's really funny. So uh, he showed me this, uh, this footage uh, from a TV special and actually that, that never saw the light of day. <laughs> you know why. But you can see it on YouTube or, or certain uh, sources um, it, it was a uh, it was a James Brown show and yeah, yeah, Michael and Prince were the audience right yeah. and so uh, you know uh, he says uh, oh bring up Michael Jackson so Michael comes up and he's just pristine you know he sings a little bit and they're, they're still doing a slow tempo groove you know and he sings a little bit you know it's like they're kind of doing the groove to uh, it's a man's world, you know, and uh, you know, Michael steps up and gets all sexy, <laughs> you know, he's doing his thing, you know, and the girls are swooning and he's doing, his, and then all of a sudden they change the tempo, they break into like this whole, you know, funk thing, and he goes, <laughs> and then he stands back and spins several times, and then does his thing, man, and he's killing, and he just, and that's it, right. He just breaks out a little bit, and then that's it. And then, during the groove, Michael goes to James, and he's not watching all this with Michael, by the way. 
Well, uh, it's, <laughs> uh, Michael goes to James and he's trying to get him to uh, to understand that Prince is also in the audience. You know, he's, right. he's right up close to his ears. Like, yes, sir. So, so finally James gets him. He goes, ladies and gentlemen, Michael just told me that Prince is in the audience. Prince, come on up, Prince. So then now they're still doing the fast groove, right? And Prince, you know, is not the kind of guy that, you know, likes, at that time, he wasn't known for sitting in. Right. You know, he didn't get it. You know, there was only one way for him to be, and that was Prince, right? So uh, he tries to do all of his normal Prince tricks, and they're failing and bombing miserably. First of all, he has his, his security big chick, uh, to well, actually, he got on his his back to go up to the stage. That was the first mistake. Um, and then you know, it's, uh, Prince had gloves on, so he was taking the glove off, and he threw it out into the audience. Do you know somebody threw it back at him like like that? Wow. And and he he's trying to <laughs> he's trying to be all you know Prince and erotic and suggestive and everything, and he ends up at some point pulling down part of the set. There was this lamp post. He actually ends up pulling it down. <laughs> it's just disastrous, you know. And he gets to the stage and and he he beckons for a guitar. Someone gives him a guitar and he's playing. And he's and he doesn't say anything. He's just trying to get into his Prince thing. And this is early on. You got to remember, this is like the Purple Rain kind of era, you know. And he's playing and he's going, yeah! he's making all these weird sounds and he's trying to get people to clap and. No one's paying attention to anything at all, and he's just—it it just bombs horribly, you know. Uh, and the whole time I'm watching this with Michael, he's like, "Who is that?" So we had our own private little laugh. Um, but that was that was early on. I mean, later on, of course, they did. Uh, became, and then, there was, of course, there's the legendary story of when Quincy tried to get the two of them together for a dinner. There was that summit, you know, Michael and uh, uh, Prince, and uh, it was. Uh, Tension was a little thick, let's just say. Wow. I was not there, but, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> now, now you know that that particular clip that you mentioned went viral yeah. about four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. So people saw that. I remember oh, seeing it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they, they yeah. saw it. But, but now to know that Michael actually saw that clip as well, that's... that's well, he was part of it. I was he was part of it, but then, you know, he had it uh, on... on on a video, and wow. uh, it, it's one thing to see it on your own, but it's a whole other thing to see it with them. With what <laughs> sort of saying that well, because well, because if you watch it, you 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 see the difference in personalities. Like oh, absolutely. not absolutely. wanting to do anything. Of course, he was up there to perform. He's a performer, but uh, but a consummate that, performer. In right. Consummate performer. He knew what to do, when, how to do it, and how long to do it. Got you. Got you. Gotcha. Because, I mean, they were up there with the Godfather of Soul. Like, everybody yeah. had to pay homage to James Brown to be on and stage And that's, that's, that's the approach Michael took. It was reverent. And he, he actually started by bowing to him. You know, right. It was very right. reverent. Right. You know, right. Right. And, and very respectful. And he came to him uh, with that attitude. And then he went there and he said, he was basically saying through his performance, thank you for, for being my inspiration. Let me show you what I can do because of you. Right. So that's what he went. Is that a whole spinning stuff and, and did, you know, James's moves, much to James's delight. You know, you right. can see the big grin on James's face, right? He's right. just like, yeah, look at, look at my boy, look at my boy. <laughs> you know, and so there was that kind of thing. But then Prince goes up there and just derails. Right, right. You know, like it's just But it was, it was, it was a lesson. It was a lesson in performance, and it was a, a, a lesson in several other things as well. And to be able to to go through that moment with Michael was just nuts. <laughs> So, one of so the most go right ahead, Doctor. I was going to say one of the most amazing things that I'm noticing is that all the people who are making comments and questions have been to many of these tours around the world, and they remember them yeah. from decades ago, and they're commenting about little particular things that they have noticed on That's the nice. tours. I, it's really amazing to see. I'm here reading them yeah. and getting educated just by reading some of these statements from some of the viewers there. Uh, but when you think about Prince, you think about, and Prince did have great respect for uh, Michael, and it's, it's and James, and James, and it's it's kind of tragic the way both gentlemen, Prince and Michael, seem to have, uh, you know, died by the same uh, fate, as it were. Uh, one of the things that I find 
uh, Greg. This is a question I have for you. Uh, I think that, of course, as a young child, you know, I was a big fan of the Jackson Five, primarily because they were it. There weren't really any other child groups, maybe the Osmonds, but surely there weren't any African-American male groups that were featured and as prominent and were ubiquitous across all the radio stations. That's one thing. And then, but when... Well, you know, wait a minute now, there were, there were the Temptations. There were the Temptations. Well, no, I'm saying children groups. I'm saying as a child, oh, oh, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they were adults. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and the Temptations are right from here. You know, four of the members of the groups are right here from Alabama, uh, three mm -hmm. from Birmingham. So one of the things I'm, I'm trying to get at, though, when you, when you think about you work with some of these artists that you work with, many. I want to talk about Michael in, for sure. Uh, did your impression, and well, you can kind of broaden it out. You can mention any other artists you want to, but, but it's one thing to think you know an artist, right? think you know their musicality and their songwriting and, and even things about them as an artist. Did you find that you, your impressions of some of them, particularly Michael, change over time or did it get better or do you remember a point at which you were like, wow, uh, boy, he really is that great or wow, he really isn't that great. <laughs> you know, things that you, and, and that don't have to be derogatory things or even glowing things. Just, I want to know how you as a musician learn about an artist, work with an artist, and then over the course of a period of time, maybe your your opinions about them may have developed. I'll just use the word develop. Well, of course. I mean, things changed over the uh, course of time. Um, I, I, it, one of the things I noticed uh, when I was working on the Destiny album with uh, with the brothers, uh, I didn't realize the extent of Michael's talent uh, that, that that went to drums. I I remember being in the studio at one point. I heard just somebody doing a really funky groove on on drums, and I turned around and looked around the corner, and it was Michael. Hmm. And I thought, oh, okay, I didn't see that coming, but it makes total sense because of his coordination and because of how he. Uh, how he was as a dancer. And um, Sammy Davis Jr. had the same ability too. Hmm. You know, he, was, he, was, he was an incredible drummer. So uh, that's uh, sort of a little known fact about uh, Mike. And, you know, I, 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 I witnessed, you know, the arc of his, of his, uh, of his, time as as an artist uh, obviously you know from two different uh, perspectives first as a fan uh, because I was in junior high when uh, I want you back first came out and I just uh, thought oh my goodness, this is just you know it doesn't get any better than this because you know first of all we had the Beatles which was my first inspiration and then we had the monkeys which was the American version of the Beatles and then we had the Jackson Five, which is the black version of the Beatles. So we had we had I had everything covered, you know. And so I just thought, oh my God, to be able to even uh, meet them or see them would be incredible. So um, so we go from that to actually being in a room with them, uh, working with them, and uh, you know, obviously it was incredible. But I, I've seen the whole arc, you know, and I saw, you know, from from that starting point uh, to uh, working with him up close with. Uh, Quincy, um, for the, well, before Quincy, too, you know, on Destiny, and then with Quincy for Off the Wall, uh, Thriller, Bad and Dangerous, um, and the tours, and then how things changed and evolved, and I saw the arc start to slowly go down, you know, um, and now, was that because just, just, of... Hmm? Was that because, did, did Michael ever get tired, and I think we may know a little of this, did he ever get tired of touring? And did, do you think just the mere fact that he was, just the whole idea of being in the whole world looking at you like you in a fish a tank, bubble a the fish whole bubble. time. Yeah, yeah did, did, did that? Yeah, a, it, it's, it, it's, well, sure, of course it did. I mean, it, yeah. it got more challenging as time went on. Um, and, you know, he was dealing with other issues. Uh, that kind of dictated him having to go out 
Um, and so while he tried to make the best of that situation, I'm sure it was, it was challenging and it was difficult for him, you know. Here's um, a question. He, he, had, he had, you know, there, there, were, there were a lot of challenges, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, they, they weren't pretty. And I'm not here to demean him or speak negatively in any way. It's just that, you know, it's part of life. It wasn't, it wasn't all glorious. It wasn't. Yeah, yeah. You know, there were was, there was some ugly bits. And there were some uh, some uh, some issues that he had to deal with. There were, there were struggles, um, and uh, you know everybody knows what they are. So got you. I got a quick question, Dr. Payne, if you don't mind, um, Go Greg. Now we all looking at the comments that are coming through uh, years after his death. I mean, people have so high regard. I mean, the fans of Michael Jackson's are fans for their life not his life but their life they love him they loved his music i mean dr penyon has already mentioned how they're asking questions about details i mean somebody wanted to know what was it like playing in australia at the tour when stevie wonder came i'm saying this to say like when you're well, I'm, the one got, I'm, the, I'm the one that got i'm the one that got stevie come <laughs> that answers the question there right so yeah. my question is how does it feel like when we see Michael or when we would have seen Michael, the Grammys or being out and just being a normal person, he was still like um, he would whisper when he spoke. He would be really if he spoke at all, he did a lot of waving and all that other kind of stuff. Like, did you ever like get behind the scenes and know like Michael, the real person, like hear his real voice? Dr. Payne, does that make sense? Like when you're with somebody that's so iconic for the whole world? And you know they present a particular way. There's got to be people around him that no, well, hears well, his real voice. Okay, bro. It's not like he sounded like Barry White when he was alone. I mean, that was his voice. Um, but he did. I mean, whispering like when he, he was being public, he really did whisper, even at no, the Grammys. No, yeah, I know he was. He was shy that way. But you know, the, the, that was that was basically the voice. Uh, when he was alone and more comfortable, uh, it would go a little deeper. Um, uh, but I mean that was basically it, you know. Um, and that was speaking really of his voice, it, you know, he he would uh, when we when we would uh, when we'd be hanging out, he he liked to call me Greg, Greg, you know, and his voice would get a little deeper like that. Um, but uh, I mean, it was really, it was just basically sort of the the high side of normal. If I that makes any sense. You know? Now someone's asking uh, to follow up with that actually. Did you ever hear Michael's vocal warm-ups? And how did he do his warm-ups if you heard them? And what did he no, think of I, himself as a vocalist? If you knew. Oh man, he was he was he was <laughs> he was bulletproof. He was uh, extremely disciplined. Extremely. You know. I mean he is very in tune with his voice as an instrument. He knew what to do, uh, always. Uh, he he thrived in the process of it. Had no problem doing stacks of vocals for hours, and he would just punch, punch, punch. I was going to ask you punch. about that too. Um, so um, I wasn't really there uh, uh, for for his his vocal sessions sessions rather, um, okay. but uh, usually I wasn't I wasn't around. Um, only because I just wasn't there, but uh, uh, but I, I do remember him uh, singing actually in the studio uh, when I was working with him and the brothers, you know, for uh, during uh, uh, Destiny and, and Triumph. But he was extremely disciplined vocally. But now, he was, so he, but that 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 has to do with his discipline as an overall performer. Got you. From from people, all the years uh, of you know. People are asking questions, and they're all over the place, but I think this is an interesting one, and, and it kind of goes to the nitty-gritty of things where all these people have been on these tours. Uh, they're saying, what about Remember the Time? Why was this song removed uh, from the concert set list, if it was? Michael never performed with it on tour, and there were rumors that there was one performance. I, I don't know, so maybe you can comment on that. I have no idea. Sorry. Okay. I don't know. He just didn't want to I do it. Uh, a... I guess he didn't want to do it. I just, I, I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember any specific reason as to why it wasn't done. 
It was worth asking um, anyway. Yeah. And this person's, their handle is history. <laughs> the one. <laughs> but you know what? I, I, let me let me say something else about Remember the Time. Uh, Michael was uh, more attracted to songs to perform that would allow him to uh, to 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 take advantage of uh, his choreography, and I don't, and maybe there was a you know it was. Maybe, if anything, more of an issue of choreography not being able to, uh, you know, make that work. I mean, he can make anything work, literally, but, uh, or theoretically, he can make anything work. But I, maybe, maybe uh, it was an issue of it not feeling doable from a choreography standpoint to where it made sense for him to perform it, if that makes any sense. It does. So, let me ask you this: uh, two things. One, uh, and you can just answer all these together, Greg, if you would. Uh, one person is asking about um, the "This Is It" movie, and I, and I want to talk a little bit about that. I don't know if it's time to do that, but but I know I've been thinking a whole lot about your last music director position of sort for Michael Jackson was at the memorial service for Michael Jackson, and I think in the Staples Center, or maybe it was at the uh, Another place, I forget that. No, it's Staples. It's Staples Center, that's right. Yeah. Um, and then, along with that, people are talking about or asking about some of the posthumous recordings, or they're talking about artists like Bruno Mars and Neo, who kind of are in a, in a lineage, or maybe even Usher to a certain extent, uh, in that Michael Jackson uh, vein. Which of these artists do you think uh, represent him well? Uh, or have well, tried I mean, to carry on? I have tried to carry on the showmanship. You just talked about the dance routines, can sing, understand the importance of uh, of entertaining, and that's you know why they're there. And are there? Are there any people we can listen to today or artists that, that have come after Michael that you feel, having worked so closely with Michael, uh, represent him well? Oh, I don't know, man. There's only one. You know, there's, there's only one. Like, really, it's, try to compare him. You know, it's, it's unfair for both sides. I mean, um, okay. I, I think uh, Bruno, if anyone, is uh, doing a good job. But I don't want to get into the, well, this is the next Michael, because there isn't one. Right, and I agree with yeah. that totally. Uh, but 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 I must say though, I mean, it's just not uncommon to hear an artist, and it could be flatteries that you know. I do like Neil. The things I like about Neil, I like his song. I like Neil too. Craft, the way they're yeah. crafted. Mm -hmm. I like his showmanship, the way he dances. Uh, I think there's so much about his presentation that does remind me of Michael in a very, very positive way. There are a lot of things about Bruno Mars' presentation, uh, the showmanship for sure, particularly the choreography. Uh, uh, so it's not really to, to compare to say one's better than the other one. It's almost as if to say, you know, I was inspired by Michael and I'm, you know, and classical artists do the very same thing. You know, you know, if, if, you know, if a Mozart uh, leads to the inspiration of a Beethoven, I mean, we have books about that. Oh, sure. So, so I'm just asking it from that standpoint, not to say that there'll never be another, because there'll never be another Mozart, never be another Beethoven, there'll never be another Stevie Wonder. But how many but singers you, you, in the well, world? Well, you can tell the ones that are obviously, uh, you know, uh, inspired by them. I mean, everyone from Bruno to The Weeknd uh, to uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are a few. Uh, Janelle Monae probably. Um, I mean. It's it's a long list. But can I add but, something uh, to that? What what people don't have, guys, is like, who is eleven, twelve years old on the scene first? Like we we're talking about, you know, most of these people are adults. I guess the youngest would have been a Chris Brown, uh, maybe at sixteen. But you know, mm -hmm. Michael was really young when he came onto the scene with his brothers, right? 
So oh, yeah. people have literally grew up with him. Ten or know? eleven, yeah. Uh, and I think that makes the difference, don't you? Don't that's you think? Good, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah, I would say that. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, to see the evolution from from the music with his brothers, and then he breaks away, but at the same time, he's got Barry Gordy and he's got Dan or Ross, you know, pushing him right along, and then he's got movies. Uh, where he's, I mean, I, I just, it, it makes his artistry so, I watched a video today, so uh, people were prepared for this, Greg. Uh, I had a new subscriber to my YouTube channel, and I looked at who mm -hmm. the subscriber was, and it's basically a playlist of Michael Jackson's concerts, right? And mm -hmm. they open up the concert, two minutes of Michael Jackson standing in one spot, lights <laughs> going, mm -hmm. and the crowd going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, like, Dr. Payne, I mean, I've seen a lot of people perform. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe in our lifetime, you know, you may have big stages like Madonna's may have had some huge stages. Uh, uh, Beyonce definitely has had some huge stages, but two minutes of just standing in one spot because he jumps out of the floor and just stands mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And you know, he loved Michael, it. He loved it. Jackson. He loved it. He loved every second of it. He's like, yes. Love me, damn it. Love me. Come on. Give it up. And he would stand there, like I said. And the longer he did it, the more crazy they were because they never knew when it was when he was gonna when he was gonna move, you know? So trust me, he loved that. He absolutely lived for that moment. I mean, but that comes from somewhere. And I know he like I said, he started performing as a kid, but yeah. I mean, you just don't you know, to get to that point to even know like I watch This Is It and, and I would tell my wife all the time, like, you got to let it simmer. And that's off of just listening to Michael talk about how he was going to transition to the next song. Like the artistry that he brought to the stage. I, I don't know. I don't I haven't witnessed and I'm not saying I'm the person that's seen a hundred concerts. So I might not be the, the you know, as Dr. I'm not like Dr. Payne have seen it done. But I mean. When you got to pull people out of the crowd because they fainted, like multiple people out of the crowd, that's pretty. They, 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 pretty they may have just been hot. May have just been hot because it was so crowded. No, yeah, no, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was heat exhaustion. It was, it was heat exhaustion. exhaustion. But it you could know, have I think the excitement yeah, of it as well. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say to follow up on that on two sides. One, Michael Jackson was a consummate performer. I mean, even when he was by himself. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I remember uh, an interview. That he did, where Elizabeth Taylor of all people were talking about how she was impressed, and how basically when they became friends, apparently a lot of their friendship because Michael really wanted to know more about the actor's role and how the actor portrayed themselves, and he had a great deal of respect for someone like Elizabeth Taylor, who and had also been there. also also Charlie Chaplin. Exactly. And Fred Astaire, right. Right. Fred Astaire. Yeah, exactly. He That's studied, you know what he's he studied the greats, and he made uh, he made a, a, a very big point about that. Studying the greats, if you want to be great, you study the greats. You don't study the goods. You study the greats. Wow, exactly. Wow. And he did that. I mean, even to, even one of his interviews, I think I heard him talk about just being in his room, even at at Neverland, and just basically uh, in, in front of his Dresser, uh, dresser or mirror or something like that, working yeah. out his moves and how he yeah. would basically. So he yeah. was in tune with himself and knew exactly at every position when he grabbed the mic, it may have looked spontaneous or it may yeah, have looked know, like it. Yeah, no, he it's just, had it's, it's practice. Yeah. It's just practice. Mm -hmm. By the way, he was also in tune with, he, 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 he was into anatomy. He studied anatomy. He also studied the movements of animals. Oh. And you can see that in certain moves uh when he would stand still under what's called a xenon light and do this thing where he would twirl around slowly and do his shoulders like this and do, i mean you know that's 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 moves from a combination of animals from uh, you know i don't know it's it's part eel part you know anything i mean but he was inspired by so many different sources you know? the moonwalk did he create the moonwalk man bobby brown well, created the moonwalk Oh, Strip, please. Show, Give me a break. Michael Jackson, the moonwalk. Okay, okay, Strip. Uh, do, that on, do that on your show. Uh, yeah, now, now, guess what? Now, Bobby Brown may have been walking on the moon. 
No, but, Bobby but Brown Michael Jackson created the Jackson. moonwalk. <laughs> okay, look, it was a co- it was a combination of things. He, you know, it was it was inspired by uh, moves from uh, other dancers as well. You know, like uh, uh, break dance, break dance moves. It was the, a break uh, dance the, uh, All right. uh, it was a combination of things. The, the Nicholas Brothers, you know, he was highly inspired by them. You know, that's going back uh, to the forties. But uh, yeah, it was something that that. Uh, he developed over time. Yeah. So let me ask you, uh, what was the dynamic of all these songs? I'm, I'm curious, who decides the order of the show? I mean, sometimes, you know, you'd be on tour and then all of a sudden uh, the stage director would come and say, okay, this is the tour and this is the show. And sometimes when you have a, a show that's organized and very theatrical like that, the set doesn't change much. Uh, you know, and so you're doing the very same thing night after night after night. You may have a, a B run if he doesn't feel like performing something. But how is that? You know, I know we talked about this a little bit before, but with Michael Jackson, some artists you, you can change the set and it's okay. I want to do this song. I don't want to do that. No, 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 All no, of, no, no, no. No, with the no, theatrics, no. everything's the same way from beginning to end, right? Yeah. So it was primarily Mike's decisions. You know, that's that's why we rehearse. But did you, know, you never change we were, doing? We were, we were, no, no, no. It, it's there, there's too much technically going on for things right. to, to to change uh, drastically. So uh, the way it was in rehearsal was, for the most part, the way it was in the actual show. We spent hours and days rehearsing, um, and you know because there's levels of rehearsal. There's the band rehearsals, and then there's the mm-hmm. band with uh, uh, production uh, as well, and then with Michael and then with the choreography, the dancers, and so forth. So it was a lot, a lot of uh, moving parts, and uh, it's, it's just based on a lot of rehearsal. Yeah, and, and very difficult, um, and very difficult to change it. Yeah. Well, but, it's, but there, it's but just, but there just, are other just, lar- just for technical reasons, you know. But there are other large shows where an artist may say, even if you have a lot of technology queued up, I mean, an artist may say, or I'm using Steve as an example, where you got a large orchestra there. It, you know, it may say, well, I don't think I want to do this tonight or in the middle of the show because he is a musician playing. Take a left turn or take a right turn. Yeah, well, Michael uh, wasn't like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Mike wasn't like that. Okay. So I do have a question from the audience as well, guys. Um, he wanted to know if there are any cool stories behind the recording of the Thriller slash Bad album. And oh, sure. Thriller. Sure. Um, I remember uh, learning and playing the parts to the way you make me feel. And uh, let's see, you know. You know, doing that and uh, having Michael standing next to me, grooving like that. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, and that was a fun moment. Um, I also remember uh, being asked to do uh, the second half of a solo uh, in the song "Bad," and the reason why it's the second half is because the first half was done by none other than, none other than arguably the world's greatest jazz organist, Jimmy Smith. So Quincy no, had the idea really? to combine. Yeah. So Quincy had the idea to combine uh, legend and novice, you know, older statesman with a younger kid, you know, and he put Jimmy Smith to do the first half of the solo on organ, and then I followed through on the synthesizer and played the second half of the solo. You know. Wow. So that didn't. Sound. I did not know that. Um, yeah. 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 The great Jimmy Smith. Yeah. So this may be um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you keep cutting me off. I'm no, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm messing. No, uh, that's all I can remember for right now. I mean, that's, those are two stories. So so I, I don't want to go back to this, but this is an interesting question. Someone asked yes. what happened with Bad Michael Jackson featuring Prince. Was that a song that was supposed to come out that nobody knows about? No, it was it, it was supposed to feature Prince on it as well. I mean, the song uh, "Bad" was uh, originally, I suppose, uh, uh, intended to be a, you know a duet with Michael and Prince, and Prince wasn't having it. <laughs> he wasn't because when he was, 
No, because when he, he talked to, he did an interview with Chris Rock about it, and Chris asked him about it. And he said, well, you know, um, you got to remember that the first line of that song is, your butt is mine. It's like, well, you know, I know I ain't singing it. So, uh, <laughs> you, you, you figure that out for yourself, you know. So, no, he, 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 uh, he didn't want to be involved in that. Yeah. That would have been a huge song. Or it would have been a huge flop. Who knows? It, it, it was a huge song without him. That's the point. Well, there well, there you go. That's the point. I um, mean, come on, he having he even had Wesley Snipes in the in the video. And that was of course before Wesley Snipes was Wesley Snipes, but still. Yeah, but crazy. but yeah, well that that was for the video. I mean, that's that's a whole other thing. The whole other thing. So, yeah. Um, you know, we think of, we think yeah. about these great artists. Uh, I, I want to get just a little personal with the family because these people want to know about this as well. What's the dynamic? Uh, what was the dynamic of the father and mother from the standpoint of being involved in the tours and the production and, and Michael and, and, and his recordings and his life? Uh, and how that may have impacted your work or the work of the tour, and then and then there are the sisters. I think about little Janet, you know, and I think about at the time, and 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 uh, Reby, Reba McIntyre, uh, Reba Jacksons, Reby, right? Is yeah, that right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so can you can you talk about that a little, little bit? I don't if there's anything to talk about, but. We always see in all the videos of Michael Jackson, uh, historically, they always talk about uh, his father uh, being there to guide their tours. And one of the wonderful videos, even when Barry discovered them, how the father was there. Did, did he stay instrumental? Well, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. No. They, they wanted to get away from him. You know? uh, he was, he well, was I knew that. Yeah, no, he was instrumental in the beginning. Uh, okay. You know, in the early days, you know, uh, before Motown and early on with Motown. By the time they got uh, to Destiny, you know, and, and the Victory Tour, well, I think uh, he was, uh, he might have been involved to some degree uh, in Victory, but, you know, there, there were hundreds of other people involved in Victory. I mean, everybody wanted a piece of that. You know, Don King, you know, this one, that one, everybody. You know. um, but no, it's, uh, Joe wasn't holding his hand during Bad and Dangerous. That, okay. that wasn't, you know, he would see long since gone from that. You know, Mom was always just uh, a pillar of support. Bless her heart, I miss her dearly. Um, and the sisters were the sisters. I mean, by, you know, Janet was doing her thing uh, in later years as well. So, no, there, there you know, and there were always uh, uh, several, you know, people involved in uh, in the production and the managing uh, of the, the solo tours and it was always quite a circus from that standpoint but no it's, it Joe wasn't really involved by that okay. time so I, I want to have a little fun right here uh, Greg oh we haven't been having fun so far oh, yeah, I've been I'm, I'm working ball. on ball <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love this the well, what are you missing <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm working it out. Dr. Payne, the longer so, we talk, the more people watch. I mean, people are still coming on to this stream see, right now. It's hey, incredible. Uh, it's crazy. It's all around the world. I'm, I'm really blown away that people coming in around the world. But we're going to have a little fun right here. So we're going to do some drop the needle, but we're going to drop the needle is going to be you dropping your fingers on those keyboards right there in front of us there. So I'm going all the way back, and I want you to give me, we're not even call the order. I'm going to call the album out. And I want you to just give me a couple of ditties of no more than two songs, about 15 seconds each, from each record. Now, the reason I'm doing this, folks, because there, it's almost like if we go to the store, and people from, from Alabama know how this works, you don't go to the store and ask for <laughs> detergent. You go to the store and you ask for some Tide. <laughs> And people know you mean detergent because it's become so ubiquitous, Tide is, that we just go to the store, hey, get, can you get a box of Tide? And they'll bring you gain or whatever it is. So 
there are so many of these quintessential songs of Michael Jackson that are basically just ingrained in our psyche uh, from these albums. So I'm just going to call the album out, and I want you to play just about 10, 15 seconds of the quint your most, in your mind, quintessential song from these albums that you probably recorded in the first place, and these are you playing them anyway. Okay, oh, let's great. start with off. Okay, start with off the wall. You, you're up. Uh, Trying not to sing, you know what I'm saying? He's gonna well, me to do a line or two. Yeah, unfortunately, that was it. And that, well, Greg's singing is enough. I, I don't think we should have you join in. Okay. <laughs> All right. We, we, That's all. We want all. people. To, we we want people to stay straight. We we, kinda... we do. We want them to stay now. So uh, uh, I'm telling Kim, Kim to bring that. Uh, I know. I I sent over the to hook. your house straight, just so you know. I, that's you know. Saying. I call I I call Ray Chu, uh, whom you know Ray. <laughs> I called Ray up there at Showtime at the Apollo. I told him to send me that hook. <laughs> so, so, and I sent it to your wife, Kim. I sent it to Kim so she can just come in that room and pull you out. I don't, so. know. I don't know. He does another one like that. I might, I, I mean, the performer may come out of me. Like, my goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah, it may. Oh, man, that's some though. good stuff, man. All good right. Stuff. We, we're moving on. Keep it my going. Next Keep album. it going. Keep it going. My next album. Of course, you know my next one. Probably Thriller. But wait a minute. Let's go back to off the wall. And okay. I, I, I have a technical problem, which is really uh, making me upset. I can't, for some reason, I can't switch octaves on this keyboard, and it's really driving me mad. <laughs> yeah, I really hate this. And, and I was doing it earlier today, or last night, and I don't know what happened. And it's really making me upset. So it's, it's, it's impeding my, my playing, because it's, uh, it's not an 88 keyboard, so I only have a limited amount, a limited amount of keys. And, I can't play it the way I would normally play it. But anyway, you'll get the idea. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, now here's a little story about that. So here's the thing. Uh, that song is I Can't Help It from uh, the uh, Off the Wall album. And Stevie wrote it. I don't know if people really know that. But Stevie wrote, I uh, can't help it. And um, uh, he sent the demo over, and uh, it was it was uh, completely different. Completely different than, than what you hear in the final product, right? So uh, what it started out like uh, was actually more of a, uh, more of a Latin vibe. It was a... Um, <laughs> So uh, Quincy wanted me to uh, do uh, an arrangement of it. So I thought, oh, great. I can't wait to get my hands on this one. So, you know, I really thought that was the direction that uh, Quincy wanted to go in. And, you know, I had Sheila E, you know, play percussion. And, um, you know, I really pimped it out, you know. And I, and I, I played the, 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 finished, the, the finished piece for Quincy. And he looked at me and went, no. <laughs> I, I was that, devastated. It's like, what? What? I, you, what, what I, I thought you. I thought I did what you. He said, "No." I, in that cool Quincy Jones vibe, it was yeah, just like yeah. he didn't say he much. Was like, he was no, just like, no, "You he knew." Said, no, no, not anything. <laughs> so, so now I got to figure out. Oh man, 
What, you know, how, so he, what he explained to me, it's like, we want to make it sexy because trying to establish Michael as a grown man, not the little bubblegum kid, you know, I want you back. This is grown Michael. This is sexy Michael. We got to make it sexy. So he said, you know, slow it down, make it sexier. And I went, oh, so when I finally connected to that concept, what you hear on the record is what came out. So and all those beautiful scents came in, you know, and I did all that stuff, you know. And he is looking at the window. And then that, you know, when he goes to the chorus, can't help it, if I wanted to, can't help it, even if I could, I can't help it, if I wanted to, can't help it, no, I can't help it, 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 can't personality to it and that's why that song works and you know what and those are just three of the number we talked about off that album so we got to jump albums uh, but oh, in fact it. i may i may do a sidebar i love when stevie talks about sidebars because when you when you think about that sexy sound one of my favorite sounds that you're on and i think you're on this track it's not even a michael jackson's record but since we're right here i'm gonna stay right here it is the one that has I'll be sure on it. It has DeBarge. It has uh, Barry White. Oh, Secret Garden. Yes. Secret, Secret Garden. Is that same feel, even those same sonics, it sounds like. Uh, are you playing that, Greg? I forgot. That would be yes. <laughs> Can I hear a little of that, please? Oh, baby. <laughs> that was my part, man. I was oh. waiting on that. Okay, go ahead, Strip. You got it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> I want you to tell me. Very white. Well. Deepest fantasy. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Tevin Campbell. Yeah, and no, Tevin's yeah. not in it. Uh, no, no, let's not. It's Tevin's not in it. Michael's not in it. But James Ingram, uh, Elvis Barge, Al B. Sure, and, and Barry. And Barry White. Okay. okay. Yeah, for great song. So technically. You All right, Greg, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Bring it back. You, what? You, you go, come on back. So, what? I'm about to tell you. Just give me a minute. Okay. All right. So, in that song, there are wonderful, lush pads. And I don't want to get too technical here, but one of the things about that song that's been great for me, again, is the sonics. That opens up with layers of these beautiful pads. Can you talk just a little bit about the layering of the pads and the things that are going on there, if you remember them? Well, <laughs> uh oh, here we go. Uh, tell you what, I do remember. I remember uh, being part of the rhythm section that was playing that groove on a different session. We were just messing around, mm -hmm. and uh, this was a different project. And so now we're working on, what was it? Uh, it's back on the block, right? That's where uh, Secret Garden's on. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Okay, so we're working on that. And so then Quincy out of the blue says, yeah, you know, um, you guys did this groove some time ago. Um, I'm going to play a little bit of it. Do you think you could do that again? No? And so, oh, so you mean this? And next thing you know, it became Secret Garden. Wow. What an so, amazing uh, song. Yeah. Um, one of those one of those songs that will I don't care where you are, you hear the first opening chords, you know yeah. exactly what it is, and it's just an amazing sound. Okay, I'm gonna jump. We're gonna get off of that. Because we this is Michael Jackson's night and we're we're giving Quincy some love. And Greg, your 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 head you you cut your head off there, so you got to put your. I know, but that's that's for my fingers, so people can actually. Oh, the, see my oh, fingers. okay. All right, do that again for all those keyboard players. Want to know how Greg's fingering that? Well, because you know. Uh, well, you see, can't do it one time. Is, you can't. No, you can't but see, teach. this is the re- this is the reason why Michael wore white socks with uh, high rise pants, so people in the back rows of stadiums can see his moves. That's why. So I'm showing you. Well, show us again. Down a little bit more. Bring it down a little more. Bring it down more. There you go. Okay. A couple of those voicings. Look at that. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna say one more theoretical thing, and we're gonna move on to the next album. Okay. One of the things I loved about uh, "She's Out of uh, My Life," all the, the that nice little diminished chord half step movement on that 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 makes that song all the way through. Uh, did you come up with that? Who came up with that? Because he, who wrote, who wrote this song? By the way, did Michael write that song? No. Um, Was that a Rod song? Uh, no, wait a minute, just hang on. It's oh gosh, Tom Baylor. Tom okay. Baylor. Tom Baylor. Can you play those diminished chord? That diminished chord movement on that—it's just unbelievable, and it—it's amazing. It just sticks out like a sore thumb, but like a wonderful well, sore thumb. Well, <laughs> yeah, I just had one this morning. Hang on, uh, <laughs> let me. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean by the. Hang on, do you mean this? No, no, no! Right on the right on the verse. Oh, she, she, oh, okay, right. She's out of my life. Yeah. Then up again. She's out of my life. Yeah, there you go. And I don't know whether to marry you or not. I don't know whether. <laughs> I, I know. And the beautiful thing about that is that basically on a, a movement like that, the song, which has a simple melody line, but to even think, because there are a number of ways that could have been harmonized. But to even think about just, okay, I'm not going to take this simple melody and just harmonize yeah. it like we would traditionally do, which would make it sound like every other song. Just to I know, because he could have he he went like this. He could have went, uh, he's out of my line. Uh, he's out of my yeah. line. You know, yes, right? exactly. Uh, but he went, he's out of my line. Yeah. And then, but how about that bridge? Um, so I learned that harmonic tone uh, shift, yes. Now see, now the thing about that is that it's a G chord, but it's a G chord with a D in the bass, not a G. So it's like it sounds, it sounds completely different if it were this. Yes. So I learned, but he starts off. He, Tom started off like this. So I learned. And I have learned 
right here. Oh. Yeah. Now he goes to the sea. Watch this. So, uh, it's pretty Unbelievable. Nice. But but the yeah. theoretically, and the thing about that song is that while the melody is so simple, mm -hmm. those harmonies make it stand out. And here's something. Yeah. There has never been a song that I can think of ever, before or after, and I could be wrong, but a pop song for sure, to, to do that in that fashion. Because usually when you have something that, that, that really resonates with people, what happens the next year and the next year? You start hearing songs that incorporates those things. And no one has done that. And so that has always stood out to me. And it, it was what the thing that brought me to that song in the first place. Okay, I got to move on. Well, to wait, 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 wait. Because, oh. you know, this song. No, come on. Look, if you start it, if you start this, you got to be prepared to finish it. Ah, um, all right. The thing is that there are there's other examples here. I mean, you know, it's... Uh, I know it. You know, so, Lionel Richie, Lionel Richie. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not talking about the board. I, I, it just, it's just that way that is moved so prominently in that, in that motif yeah. there. It becomes the motif. Uh, I get anyway. It. Hey guys, yeah. we're going to get off the theory, and I don't want to bore folks, so we might lose some. Well, actually, we're going up in viewership here, so that's great. <laughs> but, but <laughs> so, well, I don't want to talk theory too much. But that was just for me and for those yeah. music majors out there who well, there's love a, there's getting apparently a lot of them. Yeah, with the theory and stuff like that. So that's somebody, I, somebody I, just I, said one of my favorite bridges. Somebody just said that. So you know. See, so it's great for everybody. I'm, I'm jumping to the next album. Yeah. The next album, you only get two. Now, we just did four from this album. That tells you how significant Off the Wall is. Uh, now, we're moving on to the next album, and you're all over this album as well. And this is one of the ones that probably, well, what, what can I say? It's, it's Thriller. So give me two, only two if you can, 10 seconds or so of two quintessential lick sounds, things from that album. Thriller. Oh man. Uh, okay, you're gonna have to wait a minute. You only get two. Uh let's see, what can I uh, uh uh let's see, uh, uh well, Let's start with this. You don't have an octave. Don't worry about it. That, I don't have that. Yeah. I'm really pissed about that. But anyway, um, let's see. What's another one? Um, uh, shoot. I can't. I can't. This, this <laughs> stupid keyboard won't let me. It's not going to sound right. I'm going to sound like an amateur. I can't do it. So. Somebody said, I'm afraid to tell you to do this. Someone said, turn your keyboard off and turn it back on. It would work. But really? I don't hope. They hey, said, you know what? I will try that. You know what? I will try that. If this works, I'm going to send you a bottle of wine. All right, check it out. I'm turning it off. I'm turning it off. And they said it would work if I did. They said That's what they said. I don't know. What, what keyboard are you on? I don't know what keyboard you're on. I'm on a Chrome EX. Oh. It's a, it's a, it's a lovely keyboard, you know, but this stupid... This, uh, this octave thing is not working, man, and it was working fine last night. I was killing it, but you know, it's, it's Tec not working now. So as I always say to my students, technology is great. When technology it works. until it doesn't work. That's right. That's absolutely <laughs> right. That's absolutely right. So we'll count: ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, 
two, one. All right, I'm turning it back on. Hey, Strick. Yeah. Yes, sir. We're glad you could join us. We're glad you could join us for the Henry and Greg show. <laughs> listen, listen, yeah. Diane, <laughs> welcome you, welcome you to win. our show, Strick. Listen, you went a direction I absolutely could not go with you. So I'm in the comments, <laughs> watching the comments. And then when Greg starts singing, I'm doing all I can to not sing with them. Like, I'm trying to hold myself back. <laughs> the Michael Jackson's fans, I don't want to make them mad. Like, listen, they are here today, and uh, they're absolutely loving what Greg is bringing. And, uh, oh, man, the they're history, in big numbers, too. From the, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, nice. they're asking all kinds of wow. questions. They want you to play uh, Dangerous the man in the mirror uh, uh, I, I do have a question for you while you're trying to get that to work when he came out with yeah. smooth criminal the music yeah. that song kind of changed like uh he changed his costume like the whole um you know blazer and hat the thing what was that like for him was is it just a, a way for him to have a new sound new music uh bringing to the people at that time when smooth criminal came out yeah, it was just it was just doing it was a it was another phase, you know, it was new music. And but you know, the Fedora, you know, he was rocking that in Billy Jean, so don't forget that. So but so, uh, but uh, but Smooth Criminal was just uh you know, it was It was so different was at so the time cool. and then he yeah, came out yeah. with the whole leaning move. Yeah, know, that was I, fantastic. And by the way, by the way, Strick, he he came up with the patent for the mechanism that allowed him to lean like that live. He came really? up with a patent for it. Yes. The yes. patent for him to yes. be able to do there's that. A patent, there's, a, there's a mechanism uh, for him to do that and his dancers. They, they, they have these special shoes with these, uh, with these uh, not hooks, but these, these slits. And little pegs would stick up from the bottom of the stage that you can't see, and they would hold the the shoe together so all you could put all your weight on it and never fall and he came up with a patent for that wow wow yeah. see yeah. that that's interesting did not know that yeah, i did, yeah, I yeah, did yeah, not yeah. know that yeah. i was trying yeah. to figure out i, I wondered about that guess what whoever suggested that i whoever suggested that i turn it off and, and reboot it thank you god bless you because now it works <laughs> There's so many people commenting. There's so many people online. I I couldn't even find. The so now I can go. Just to that. Say, Who says I can do it? Ah, you know what? And then I can also do okay. this. Wait, wait, watch this. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on, I got another one. Wait a minute. All right. That's the second one. Now, the people from, people from around the world, we got so many people on this. I'm so this glad show. I got this active working. You know, God from bless you. I'm glad you got it too, because I, oh I don't think God. it would have ended well. But, no. but no. the thing is, one of the things that's really amazing to me, um, yes. here we are, folks. We're sitting here talking to Mr. Greg Filling Gaines, who's recorded all these great songs on these records that we have known. And I think about something like Thriller, and I think about Billie Jean, 
And I can see myself just seeing those videos on MTV and just thinking about, and then every single minute, every single hour, somewhere around the world, those songs are being played. On. Unbelievable. It must have been an amazing feeling for you to know that you contributed to, I'll just use the word lexicon, a, a musical language, just kind of being able to contribute in such a fashion like that. Um, well, Henry, I, I, let me just tell you this. It doesn't suck. Uh, it doesn't no, suck. I, 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 it doesn't suck. <laughs> it doesn't suck. Doesn't now, suck. okay. So, all right. Since Thriller you know, was one of the most successful records, if not the most successful record in the whole history. All right. There you go. You oh, got sorry, another one sorry. off the record. Yeah, I was telling well, you. Well, no, that, that's, that's bad. Sorry. Okay, well, well, well you, 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 you're jumping the gun here. I know, but somebody somebody requested a while back to play bad, so I'm just going to... Well, I haven't gotten to the bad album yet. Okay, sorry, okay, sorry. Sorry, uh, sorry. We're still on Thriller. Okay, we're still on Thriller. Okay, you, you get one more. Okay, one more on Thriller? Um, okay. Uh, okay. Hang on. While he's thinking, folks... And choosing patches, I want you to know you're talking and viewing Mr. Greg filling in, Michael Jackson's MD, uh, recording artist for most of on all of his greatest records from from Off the Wall to Thriller to Bad and Beyond. What you got, Greg? Uh, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Uh, shoot. A... Somebody's requesting human nature. <laughs> well, interesting that you should bring that up. <laughs> um, I'm really. Uh, now, I'm gonna do this, but that's not me on it. It's just, uh, it's just one of the great songs of all time. It's and my dear, story. dear. My dear, dear friend, Steve Picaro, just, ah. just knock this one out of the park with this. And I'm going to try and do it justice. Uh, you know, I'm not on it because they didn't need me for this. It's all Steve Picaro. But, uh, hang on. And everybody should know who Steve Picaro is. Hey, Strick, you, you got to stop. Strick, nice. you know what? Strick, hold up, Strick. You know what? I think I feel your pain. Because, you know, <laughs> the way he's playing that, it makes me want to sing, man. And I'm doing everything I can just not to. Because I want folks to stay on this cast. But that was just wonderful. Hey, I was, I was feeling the whole time. I was like, look. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Live it out. Live I, it out, baby. Live it out. I Live tell you what out. I want to do. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to probably create me a Michael Jackson Spotify playlist tonight. I know there are plenty out there, but I, 
I don't need a reason to make a Spotify playlist. If you know me, you know I will make a Spotify playlist at the drop of a hat. So I got one tonight I'm going to do. That is amazing. So, I, you know, we could stick with the Thriller album. Um, and I, I just see Quincy standing on the stage at the Grammys, holding all of these Grammys for that record. And, uh, you know, and we got so many people online, and I know that we, we kind of said we'd be here two hours, but I'm a, we're going to drop one or two from the, we start with the bad album, so go ahead and do the bad album. And uh, let's hear a little of that. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Two, three, five. Your butt is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, now, I'm thinking about Weird Al Yankovic oh, <laughs> version man. of that. Well, of course, of course. Uh, so it's kind of hard. Because I'm fat. Yeah, he's messed me up for that for a long time. No, he's, you know, he's it, brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. He really is brilliant. Um, you know, I, and we can't do this all night because there's just so much music uh, pertaining. But I do want to... Uh, we can do it all night. It's just, that, it's just that, you know, the... the, the, the the, it's just going to require a bigger check, but we can do it all night. <laughs> okay, we'll we, we, we work that out. I'll have yeah. my guy call you. I'll have my guy call you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, guy. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> and you know how he is calling my guy, right? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, all too well. <laughs> so anyway, so <laughs> I, I want to sh- I want to shift just a little bit though, you know, yeah. and and giving proper respect as we have and and honor to Michael Jackson, you know. Greg, I, I think as most of America and the world did uh, when we learned of, of his death. And, uh, but, but then just to see you and what you had to do and which probably what you had to go through emotionally just to serve as music director for that big memorial service and all the people who made... Uh, well, I, it's, day day. I I actually I actually was not the MD for that. I was involved in it, but I was not the MD. You were not the MD. But, I thought you uh, were. No, not not really. I don't. I, no, I w- I wouldn't say that I was. Um, uh, I I was involved in it, but I have to tell you, there are some personal stories, and I you know, for the longest while, I was actually looking through my phone because I have some incredible pictures, and I can't find them. I know they exist. I know they exist, but maybe they're not on the phone. But. Um, uh, it was a huge blow, obviously. It was devastating. Um, and it was tough because, you know, um, uh, Brandy was the one who actually reached out to me to, to be involved, even at, at the, the Staples there. Because there were two events. It was the Staples one, and it was the very private one that the family right. held at, at, at uh, Forest Lawn. And I was, uh, they asked me to, to play there, too, uh, which was a deep honor. You know, I... I I played piano as people were coming up the hill to, to go to their seats. You know, I was playing music for, for, for them to enter to. And I played a couple of other, and a couple of other, uh, you know, segments in that uh, service as well. But um, for the Staples thing, Randy called me, and I remember talking to him, having conversations with him first. Um, and I remember having private conversations with, with Marlon and, um, you know, crying together. It was very tough. And then I remember going to Staples and uh, because Ken Ehrlich, the great director of Ken Ehrlich, who's, uh, who has since uh, uh, you know, left from directing the Grammys. Uh, his last one he did was in 2020, but he's directed Grammys for decades. Mm-hmm. Now. And, and several other uh, uh, TV specials, legendary director. Mm-hmm. He was the one uh, commissioned to direct the, uh, the, uh, the service. And so I remember having a meeting in one of the backstage rooms at, at Staples with Randy, Jelaine, uh, Tito, Marlon, and Jackie, and Ken, and one of the uh, production staff, you know, and Valdez. And Valdez was the one who was, uh, uh, you know, 
running down the sequence of events. Uh, and we just sat there in silence listening to him give this rundown of what was supposed to happen. And every once in a while, he, someone would, would start crying. It was really, really heavy, man. It was really heavy. Mm. And, uh, uh, but, but uh, you, know, there, there, you know, as with every, uh, you know, remembrance of death, uh, there, are, there are pleasant moments, funny moments, and incredibly sad moments. And, uh, the, you know, we, we managed to have some laughs, too. Um, but it was painful, man. And there's pictures I have of that meeting in that room with Kendall and Valdez and the brothers, you know. And, uh, and then uh, at a later point, Barry came down and I took pictures with Barry and the brothers, you know, at Staples. And, and, and there, was a, there, there was a point that was supposed to be in the service where <clears throat> after the main event at Staples at the arena, that they would walk through this underground tunnel and go to uh, the smaller venue, which was at that time called the Nokia Theater. Now it's called Microsoft Theater. Um, but, uh, and I remember taking that walk with the brothers through that underground tunnel to get to the other theater. Uh, but when, when, when it actually happened, they didn't, they didn't walk to the other theater. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, but I remember taking that walk with the brothers. I mean, it was unbelievable, man, you know, to, to be there for such an intimate moment like that. I can imagine it was, I, I just can't, well, I, in, in many ways I can't imagine, but in other ways I, I couldn't imagine that, you know, and just, uh, yeah. just. And I, I, gotta, I gotta say something else really quick. There's, I just saw a, a fan flash on the screen that, that, that said, uh, I miss him even though I didn't know him. And I gotta tell you uh, something that will resonate with that comment. Uh, sometime later on, I went to visit mom. Yeah, I miss him even though I haven't met him. That's from uh, uh, Maloney. And uh, sometime later I went to visit mom and I said to her, I remember looking at her and saying, mom, I'm here to represent the millions of people who wish they could be to tell you we love you. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. And I, I, I got the, to hug her and everything was so yeah, the, the world stopped. The world just literally stopped at, at the... At, at all of that and, and and what a beautiful thing though to know that throughout eternity we'll be able to listen to all of this great music and Greg you know it's so amazing too that you are a walking testament to the life of Michael Jackson and not only you know yes he was a huge star but I think of all those sounds, and I'll use the phrase quintessential sounds, all, all the things that we identify, that you were so important in shaping those sounds and being there and recording those sounds. And many mm -hmm. times as the technology is choosing those patches, that means so much in many ways. And so we're so, so very honored to have you here with us. And, I, and you know, we'll maybe take a few more questions and, and Trick, I'll turn it over to you in a minute. But I, one of the things I wanted to say before we do have to go is that I really, really want to thank uh, the University of Alabama at Birmingham, UAB. Yes, and, absolutely. And the absolutely. administration for uh, allowing us to bring you in and to bestow upon you the UAB Jemison Visiting Professorship. And, and folks, if you've enjoyed having uh, Greg around for this semester, uh, <laughs> we are hoping that, I'll just put it this way, this won't be it. I'll just leave it at that. Ah, <laughs> this that's, right. It. that's right. Yeah. Man. That's right. That's so right. More to come. We, yeah, and so there's, hopefully there's more to come in a, in a more uh, sustainable way. And yeah. uh, I'm, just, I'm just honored, Greg, that you're so humble and such a great guy. It's, it's so much fun. And, uh, and, 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 and Strick, I can't thank you enough. I mean, I thank you. This is a beautiful show you have. Thanks, and, and Well done, Strick. Thank you, Greg. I'm a big fan, a uh, straight-up guy. And, uh, when I reached out to ask if we could kind of come back around a second time because the first one was so successful, I had no idea that we would be able to top the first one. But I think we've topped <laughs> the first one, Strick, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a um, record tonight. This has definitely been a, um, a record for Strick City Live, and I thank you, Dr. Payne, for allowing me to be a part of it. And, Greg, man, it's just an honor to be able to host you um, 
your your work speaks for itself. Uh, but to have you talk about your, your history and working with all of the people you've worked with, including the work that you did with Michael, uh, man, we, as a fan, like I'm a fan like everybody else, uh, mm-hmm. to know the part that you play in that is awesome. And uh, to have personally have met you, uh, you know, it, it just makes me feel good to be able to host this particular thing and for people to get a chance to talk for you to get a chance to talk and for people to listen all over the world and feel good about what they remember about Michael. And then the music. Oh, my goodness, brother. The music is great. I'm going to be singing whether y'all hear me <laughs> for the rest of the night. You know what I'm saying? I right? loved it. I well, listen, it. listen. I, I want to show you all something because you were talking so much about off the wall, right? Uh-huh. All right. I want to see if I can get this to work. Uh, let's see if I can get my phone. To get, okay, so now, 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 wait, I'm gonna mute, I'm gonna mute so the you, sound. Okay. So, so now, what's now, happening is. Oh, All right, hold on, hold on, uh, I got it. Yeah. I got it. I got it. I thought I did. <laughs> uh, really okay. Yeah? All right. Yeah, that's not gonna work, Greg. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. No, well, watch, watch. Because I just turned it down on my phone. I just turned okay. it down on my phone, right? So, okay. so, I'm doing this so you'll have a better view of one of my little things hanging All right, let on me the wall. Let me, let, me pull, let me pull it up. Yeah. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Don't fall. You don't have fall. Okay, now, hang on. Let's see. I'm gonna take my uh, phones off. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, this is gonna be worth it, kids. Don't worry about it. Here we go. All right. All right, hang on. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, front. I love these. Uh, front camera. Oh, back camera. Good. <laughs> Let's try this. There we go. Did we see that? Oh, let me let me publish that. There we go. There we go. How's that? That's cool. Look at that. Can you see that? Yep. So Unbel- it, I assume you can still hear me. Yeah, we this can. is a very special plaque that Quincy had made for virtually everyone involved in the making of of uh, Off the Wall. This is a portion of a real brick wall encased in this plaque. Look at that. Right? So there's a thing, and this says, thanks for your help, we got all the marble on this one. Each marble represents a million sales, as you can see, right? So that's a portion of the brick wall. Now, I'm going to explain this message. Quincy came up with personalized message for every single person involved in this project. Uh, his nickname for me is Mouse, but he's the only one who can call me that at this point. <laughs> but he used to say, jokingly, that you know when he was a kid, his father would take him to see me, <laughs> which is why he says you're my child and I. Isn't that sweet? That is amazing. That's cool, man. Isn't that amazing? So that is unbelievable. And that's re- those are real bricks, too, by the way, everybody. So this, this is a portion of a real brick wall. Yeah. So that hangs next to a very special event I did for Bill Withers at Carnegie Hall, celebrating him, a big poster. Okay. And on the other side of this is this, where it all began. Yeah, one is dear to me. That, that's, there you are. Wow. Uh, you are a living legend, and we're just so honored to. So, so there you go. Know, I just wanted to yeah, show you that. So that's yeah. that's on each side of the desk. You know, there's that, right? So I just thought you'd get a kick out of seeing that. Yep. Yeah. And, right? and your Emmy's up. Your Emmy's upstairs on the piano. So I saw that. Yeah, the Emmy's <laughs> on the piano. Uh, so this uh, is there we go. Simply oh, amazing. This worked out pretty well, didn't it? It worked out amazingly yeah. well. Okay, good. So uh, now I'm gonna hang on. 
And then we come back here. Oh, that was good, wasn't it? Wow. That was amazing. Technology. Yes. When it works, it's great. <laughs> Technology. So well, um, you know, we actually are really in time. We started just a little late because of uh, trying to get yeah. our technology worked out. So yeah. we're around two hours, so we're doing good. And Strick, I don't know if you want to close out. People saying, please do it again. I am just blown away <laughs> at the number of countries around the yeah. world yeah. that have tuned in tonight. I mean, from Australia to Russia to Brazil, Colombia. No, it's, it's pretty over. humbling. It's pretty humbling. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm well, really touched and surprised, I have to say. Yeah. Well, no, I think that you, you know that experience that you've had in people really do know who plays in these bands. They do know who's behind the scene. And uh, we'll have to find a way to do it again. You know, maybe we'll do a Toto night. You know, we'll do an Eric Clapton night. He's been on all these records, so we'll find <laughs> another night to do it. But, but Greg, thank you so much, and we're honored. Strick, you want to close us out? Man, this has been great. I'm just tapping the countries that people are saying. It's crazy, man. From. Egypt. Um, Egypt. Ghana. I just saw Ghana. Yeah, oh my yeah. gosh. It's, 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 Finland, uh, Sweden. Definitely been um, a, wow. uh, a record-breaking night for me. So I wow. appreciate you guys being allow me to be a part of this show. And Greg, man, I can't say enough uh, <laughs> about um, getting a chance to talk about Michael with you tonight. And man, I mean, we could talk about. Thank you, I mean, Dr. Pena said Toto, and we could talk about man the Quincy Jones stories would be a worthwhile conversation as well. You know. Yeah, I got stuff. I got I got I a million of them, bro. I, bet. I, I bet. got a million of them. If I ever hear that you were at one of those parties, we have to have a conversation. That being said, uh, <laughs> that being said, man, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, the Quincy so parties are okay. It's not the Quincy parties we want to talk about. It's okay. A couple of those other parties nice. that, we can, that he doesn't want us to talk about. Right, 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 right. <laughs> what a phenomenal night. Thank you guys so very much for everybody all over the world for watching. All here. over the world, everybody. Uh, you've seen the, uh, the Facebook page. Subscribe if you're here. I don't always talk about uh, Michael Jackson, but who knows who we will have next. Ruben has been on the page. Roy Ruiz Jr. has been on the page. So there's something there that you can see and enjoy some of the uh, interviews I've done over time on my Facebook and YouTube channel. So thank you guys so very much. Uh, Dr. Payne, you mind we have Greg to close it out? Yeah, please. I love it. So you, Greg. Join the stream team with Strick and Brent and be a part of the stream network. Our goal is really simple. We're here to help you succeed.